Good morning, this is Dr. Joe Moscato of Missouri Cancer Associates, and this morning I'm going to talk about a very common malignancy, multiple myeloma. I know you've seen a lot of this on the floor, uh, and it's becoming more common as our population ages. Now, multiple myeloma is a malignancy of plasma cells. Plasma cells are the end product of B cells, and generally produce immunoglobulins as their normal function. The cancer is characterized by infiltration of the bone marrow by plasma cells, lytic bone lesions, and a monoclonal protein production. That is because this is a clone of cells, they're all producing the same immunoglobulin rather than a variety of immunoglobulins. This is associated with end organ failure, such as end organ problems with bone marrow and bones themselves, kidneys, other organs if affected by monoclonal proteins, and occasional soft tissue masses can be seen. The diagnosis is made by looking for those things we just discussed. Clonal plasma cells in the bone marrow, a monoclonal protein, and for symptomatic myeloma, end organ damage such as anemia, hypercalcemia, renal insufficiency, or lytic bone lesions. Smoldering myeloma, which is truly myeloma, but is quiescent and needs no treatment, is diagnosed by a monoclonal protein of greater than 3 grams and or marrow plasma cells greater than 10% with no organ damage. A mugus or a monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance requires a monoclonal protein of less than 3 grams bone marrow plasma cells less than 10% and no evidence of end organ damage. Now the staging of multiple myeloma has been simplified and basically it relates to only two things, the beta-2 microglobulin and the albumin. Now the beta-2 microglobulin is also related to renal function and so that of course has a bearing here. In any case, stage one is a low beta-2 microglobulin of less than 3.5 and an albumin of more than 3.5. Stage 3 is a beta-2 microglobulin of greater than 5.5, and everything else is stage 2. Now, in terms of testing, we certainly want to do a serum protein electrophoresis, which measures the monoclonal protein and shows how many peaks. And immunoelectrophoresis, or an immunofixation, determines the type of protein, such as IgG kappa. Also used are urine immunoelectrophoresis with a 24-hour urine collection, and more recently, free light chains on some occasions. The beta-2 microglobulin is a small protein excreted by the kidney, which goes up with more aggressive myeloma. The free light chains, a new test, can measure isolated light chains, either lambda or kappa, and looks at the ratio. And if there's mono, a monoclonal protein in the urine, this free light chain, which is a plasma test, is almost always abnormal. So it's very helpful. Other testing includes a bone marrow biopsy, where we're looking at plasma cells and sometimes cytogenetics for prognosis. A metastatic bone survey, which note is not a bone scan. This is plain x-rays of bones looking for lytic lesions. Bone scans may not be very sensitive here. As noted, the serum protein electrophoresis, immunoelectrophoresis, free light chains, 24-hour urine for PEP and IEP, and a beta-2 microglobulin. Presentation is usually bone pain, anemia, and sometimes hypercalcemia and renal insufficiency. Amyloidosis, which is the light chain protein being deposited in tissues, can complicate the issues because it can cause CHF, hepatomegaly, purpura, orthostatic hypotension and neuropathy, and amyloidosis can present separately as a disease of light chain deposition or as part of myeloma. Myeloma can be asymptomatic, such as smoldering myeloma, and on the other hand can cause very severe problems of presentation such as spinal cord compression, renal failure, and severe hypercalcemia. MUGUS, which stands for a monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance, it's very common. It's seen in 3% of people over the age of 70. And one of our jobs is to distinguish smoldering myeloma and active myeloma from mugus. 
As noted before, muggets must have a low M protein of less than 3 grams and plasma cells less than 10% and no end organ damage by definition. The treatment of multiple myeloma has been evolving. The initial treatment of to treat hypercalcemia, renal failure, and pain, and urgent radiation may be needed. The first thing we have to do is decide if a patient is a stem cell transplant candidate and once under control, chemotherapy or immunotherapy. And the initial therapy has been revolving, evolving, sorry, <laughs> evolving too, over time. Uh, Faldax or thalidomide and dexamethasone is still very commonly used. It's been replaced a lot by Revlimid and dexamethasone. The VAD and DVD are almost disappearing. And newer trials have added bortezomib or Velcade up front, and this has recently been shown in a randomized trial to improve survival with melphalan and prednisone. If not transplant candidate, melphalan, prednisone, and thalidomide has become standard, but more recently, melphalan, prednisone, and Velcade. So you'll see both of those used. Bisphosphonates routinely and IVIgG can be used for repeated infections. Bisphosphonates help uh, delay time to fracture and need for radiation therapy in bones. The complications are pathological fractures, spinal cord compression, renal failure, hypercalcemia, hyperviscosity usually seen in IgA myeloma, infection, anemia, and amyloidosis. This is a bad disease and needs aggressive treatment to prevent these complications. Infection is very common and often mode of death. DVT and pulmonary emboli are also very common, especially in the combinations of thalidomide dexamethasone and revlimid dexamethasone. Pancytopenia, neuropathy is seen with thalidomide and Belcade, and iridia rarely can cause renal insufficiency and osteonecrosis of the jaw. The outcome has been improving. The average survival is three to five years, depending upon the study but the quality of life has been greatly improved by bisphosphonates, and it's certainly not unusual for us to see five-year-plus survivors. More agents are available to use in sequence. Post-transplant long-term survival, and I'm talking about seven to 10 years, is 15%, and better supportive care overall has improved outcome. So in summary, myeloma is a serious disease, quite common, and we're fortunate that we have more tools available to us now than we did 10 to 15 years ago. So the patients do much better with fewer fractures, but it's still a difficult disease and needs a lot of delicate care. And as usual, if you have any questions for me, please don't hesitate to stop any of us in the hall and let us know. Thank you for your attention this morning, and I hope you learned something.